May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. We all are just walking each other home. This quote from American spiritual teacher and author Baba Ram Das expresses his belief that human beings need one another and that human beings as sojourners on the way are called to accompany one another through all that life brings, the joys and the sorrows, the suffering and the wellness, the celebrations and the grieving. We meet one another in the fullness and abundance of life and in the depths of the wilderness. We have known times of belonging and contentment, as well as times of isolation and exile. And ours is not just a physical journey from birth to death. It is also a spiritual journey. We need both human companions who walk alongside us through life, and we need God who accompanies us, is with us, and who one day will welcome us home. Through the spoken words of the prophets, God's messengers on earth, we are called into relationship with God and others. Today, we heard from three of God's prophets. Malachi, Zechariah, who is the voice of our psalm, and John. And each speaks a message to a particular people at a particular time, calling them to hear and to listen and to return to God, and maybe most importantly, to not lose hope. Into a time of corruption and temple abuse, the prophet Malachi assures the people that a purification will come, one which will bring forth radical healing and new beginnings for God's people. Silenced for the entirety of his wife Elizabeth's pregnancy, Zechariah uses his newfound voice to give praise and thanks for God and for the Savior's coming. And then he proclaims his own son, John, to be a prophet and the one who is called to go before the Lord to make a pathway for the coming of the Lord and the Messiah to prepare the way. In our gospel today, it is John who, in the wilderness regions outside of Jerusalem, brought fulfillment of the word of the prophet Isaiah. It is John, as a voice crying out in the wilderness, who calls the people to return home to God. He reminds them that God has not left them, and he reminds them that God is the God who saves. Through his words, by the acts of baptism, John assures God's people of God's forgiveness, and he calls them also to prepare a way for the coming of the Messiah. For you see, it is not just the prophet who prepares the way. It is each of them and each of us. Using the words of the prophet Isaiah, Luke paints this beautiful picture of what the world that is redeemed by God might look like, how it might be brought to life. The valleys that are low, filled, the mountains that are high, brought down, this equality and this equanimity of being for all of God's people. Because it is in John's words that we hear all flesh, not just some flesh, 
but all flesh, all people shall see the salvation of God. Now how we come to God's word and how we hear it with our ears and experience it arises out of our own realm of understanding. I would venture to say that we each come to it differently. Some of us may hear the language of the prophets as poetry, while others of us may close our eyes, calling to mind the visual images of valleys and hills and pathways that surround us here on this peninsula. And for others still, hearing these words again may be like catching up with a dear friend over a cup of coffee or being wrapped in a warm blanket or hearing them again might feel like coming home. Now for me, the words in today's gospel come to life through music. It is impossible for me to hear the words, there is a voice in the wilderness crying, or every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill made low, without hearing in my head and my heart the tune of hymn 75 that we will sing during communion today, or to hear Handel's Messiah. It is there. For me, God's word set to music is an invitation to enter the portal of the sacred holy. And yet, how God breaks into our lives is not the same for each of us. It happens differently. And the invitation that we have before us is to notice. To notice how we connect best with God's word. How it speaks to our hearts. And then the invitation is to honor how that is and to practice that connection with the sacred scripture. As we reflect today upon the words of the prophets, there is so much good news to behold. The God of all spoke again to God's people, reassuring them of God's care and God's promises, promises that are kept. The God of all broke through into the world in human form, not embodied as an earthly king, but as a humble child whose destiny it would be to transform the world. And the God of all chose to speak through a lone man in the wilderness, located far from the center of societal and religious power, with a message that was not just for Israel, but a message for everyone. It is not a mistake that you heard the names of all of those that were serving in secular and religious power during the time that John and Jesus were on the planet, for they're juxtaposed against the voice of the lowly that has been raised up. In our listening, the prophet John, the lowly, has been raised up. And he has been given voice, and he has been given agency to speak. And with urgency, he calls each of us to return home to God and to prepare for Christ's return and to create within ourselves as best we can a place for God to dwell, a place within us that is home to God. As we listen and we pray and we come into the presence of God and to the holy, may we hear God speaking into our hearts. As we consider how best we are to accompany one another home along our earthly journey, for surely we are all called to accompany one another in this life. As we consider that, I invite you to hear the words of verse 3 of our communion hymn. And listen. Listen to these words. Do you hear in them assurance? Do you hear God speaking of power and love? Do you hear God's promises? <laughs> 
The word of our God endureth. The arms of the Lord are strong. He stands in the midst of nations, and he will right the wrong. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd, and the lambs he'll gently hold. To pastures of peace he will lead them and bring them safe to his fold. Amen.